My name is Julius. I'm 62 years old and I'm addicted to balloons. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a TLC show called My Strange Addiction. This episode features a man called Julius who has an emotional and physical interest in balloons. They're beautiful, they're soft, smooth, delicate. I have a connection with them. Intellectually I know that balloons are not alive, but sometimes I wonder if it's my love for them that brings them to life. My first reaction was, Wow, balloons, that's kind of strange. Well, at least it's not children. Must be a bit awkward at the grandkids' birthday parties, though. So, Julius has been addicted to balloons for over five decades. It started when he was a child as an innocent attraction to the shapes and colours. And now, Julius has filled his home with over 50,000 balloons and can't sleep unless he's surrounded by them. I love all balloons, but I do have my favourites. I like the crystal clear, the, the transparent. You know, it's like a soap bubble, you know, you can see through it. I, I've got the long ones, the round ones, but my favorite is the spherical ones. Why? I, I don't know. I, I guess it's like a guy that prefers blondes or brunettes, you know? Julius is so addicted to balloons that he even has an entire room dedicated to them. This is my balloon sanctuary. I have uh, magenta, purple, yellow, blue, red, and clear. And uh, wherever I, I have a white one, I don't have many white ones, but I try to put the white ones in there, like there's a white one over there. And then I've got some orange and yellow and green. I try to alternate it to keep all the colors, you know, uh, of the rainbow in there. Now, I know what you're thinking. The old man from Up has absolutely lost it. But after spending that long alone with a child and a dog, it's probably a good thing he ended up with just a thing for the balloons. One of my favorite balloons is the weather balloon. It's very delicate uh, and soft and, and smooth. It's probably one of the softest balloons I've got. For me, it's the bigger the better. Of course, I can't get, you know, an eight foot balloon in this room, so I, I settle for the five foot, uh, you know, weather balloon. I guess you can say it's more to love. I wonder if this guy's ever heard of hot air balloons. He says the bigger the better. Forget five foot weather balloons. Imagine this guy's reaction to an 80 foot monster with an open flame liquid propane torch lighting up from below. The guy would nut instantly on first sight. This guy would give the hot air balloon pilot the most awkward ride of his life. The pilot would just be wondering why this strange man paid all this money for a hot air balloon ride just to spend the entire time staring straight up at the canvas. Probably also while trying desperately to pretend not to notice the massive bulge growing in Julius's trousers. Mr. Bergen, do you have a massive erection? Really? Yes, I do. Um, I'm sorry, it's the, it's the pleats. I didn't mean for that to be so descriptive, but if I had to imagine it, so did you. I sleep in my balloon room every night. When I wake up in the morning, it's like being in balloon heaven. Now, when I say he's interested in balloons physically too, I, uh, <laughs> I wasn't joking. My love for balloons, it's also a sexual love. When I see a, a beautiful balloon, my heart starts to flutter and I get aroused. I'll take a 12 inch and I'll inflate it to 11 inch. That way it can take a lot of abuse. I'm holding one, you know, hugging it. I'll kiss it. And it's like being in heaven. I mean, don't you like to hug and kiss the woman that you love? <laughs> There's lots of people out there that feel the same way as I do about balloons. But there's two groups uh, of the lunar group. You got the poppers that get aroused by popping balloons. And you got your non-poppers. I'm a non-popper. Julius's addiction started when he was hospitalized aged just four years old. My mother come to visit one time and she gave me a, a real nice blue balloon. But that night the nurse grabbed it and I heard the balloon pop. So after she left, I just cried myself to sleep. Ever since then, the sound of a balloon popping devastates Julius, and he even rescues balloons he believes to be in danger. I'll go to car dealerships and uh, do what I call a balloon rescue. When they set them out early in the morning, they're really beautiful. And as the sun uh, bakes on them, they get really dull, uh, misshapen. I feel, you know, like I give them a second chance at life. But Julius doesn't share his extreme love for balloons with many people. The only people that know him is 
my family. My wife thinks it's strange, but she accepts it. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be the only one that's surprised that Julius has a wife. And to be honest, I don't blame her for not wanting to come on the show. Imagine having to sit there and answer questions on national TV about how your husband tries to bring balloons into the bedroom, with his five foot weather balloon side chick staring you down in the background. I mean, it's the stuff of nightmares. The fact that he feels like he has to keep it a secret uh, definitely points to that there is a, a, a problem. I see nothing wrong with loving balloons. It's not hurting anybody. It's not dangerous. And I have no desire to change. Today, his nephew, who's actually an addiction counselor, wants to confront the issue and convince Julius to see a therapist. I've heard through the family a little talk about your balloons, uh -huh. about your balloon room. So what kind of questions do you have? What do you get out of your balloons emotionally? When I inflate them, it seems like they come to life for me. Really? Yeah. I heard that there was a some physical attachment to these balloons, maybe sexually. There's sexual overtones to it. Really? Yeah. What is it that gives you that sense? Is it a smell or a feel? It's all of it. It's all of it. It's the feel, the smell. The looks. The looks, and I don't want to go any further into that. OK. You ever think that maybe there's something wrong? Nope. You know, yes. nothing. If you feel like it, you have to keep things hidden, especially something like this. There's obviously a problem. Do you think you'll ever give it up? Nope. No. No. Definite no. Definite no. Uh, hell, I've been doing it too long. Wow. So how long have you been doing how many years all together do you have collecting these balloons oh collecting them i started when i was about eight okay all right so you're 62 now so that's what 40 40 years, years. wow Okay, I get quick maths under pressure from camera crews might not be easy, but boys, come on, you're 14 years off here. 62 minus 8 is 54. I mean, you'd be forgiven for rounding down to 50, but 40? Take a time out and count on your fingers if you need to. Wow, that's quite a, that's quite a bit of energy, time and energy. Do you spend a lot of time and energy during the day with them? No. Or just sometimes come up, go up and... Well, sometimes I'll rescue them, like, like at a, you know, car dealership. Then I'll spend a little time, you know, if they're still floating, I'll let them float until they fall. If they're already, you know, fallen, then I'll untie them and powder them, put them in a bag. Well, when, you, when you say powder them, what? Talcum powder. Talcum powder. That keeps them from, from sticking together. Okay. All right. All right. Do they, do they, do they ever go bad or anything? Oh, like yeah, if I don't take care of them. So when you take care of them, it's involving talcum powder and... And desiccant in a seal mill bag. Really? Y'all, I'll be showing you. Okay. Yeah. And I've got some that's over 40 years old. Really? Yeah. Wow. Is it, does it cost a lot of money doing this? No, I don't think so. Uh, there's people that spend more money uh, buying guns. This is probably the most American response I've ever heard. As if buying guns is the standard hobby to compare it to. I can't lie though, I'm quite impressed that he's managed to keep some balloons on the go for 40 years. This guy has some balloons in his house that are literally twice my age. As impressive as it is though, I'm not sure I'd ever want to see them in real life. I don't really know exactly what he does with the balloons and honestly, I'm kind of glad his nephew didn't ask. I think we're better off not knowing. Have you ever thought about going and, and, and talking to somebody about it? I don't have a problem. Right, right. So why be concerned? Everybody's trying to make me think like I got a problem. I yeah. don't. Yeah. Give it up. These questions that I ask, they're just strictly out of love and concern. And I don't want you to think that there's anything else in that. Would you be willing to go and, and, and talk to somebody? OK. I've seen a psychologist before, and about the only thing he said to me is, well, you're not hurting anybody, so why worry about it? I see nothing wrong with loving balloons, and I'm going to continue to love balloons because that's what makes me happy. You know what, if that's what he enjoys and he's not hurting anyone, fair play to him. Who are we to judge, hey? 
Right, that is unfortunately all we have time for today. So if you'd like to see more Strange Addictions, make sure you're subscribed because there are some even weirder episodes coming up very soon. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like down below or comment with what episode or series you'd like to see next on this channel. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now.